In studio with uh, New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap. Mr. Good Mr. morning. Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matthew Harvey. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. Via telephone, the ghost lady of Charlestown, Ann Keel Fern. And good morning to you. Good morning to you, Rob. And in studio, Zach Cole, your emissary from the other side. Good morning, Zach. How are you? Good morning. Good to have you here, buddy. And where are you right now? I'm in Hampton, Virginia. What are you doing there? Uh, let's just say I had a calling, and it's <laughs> good. I, I used to live down here, so um, it's uh, it's like coming back home. I like being by the water. Well, happy Halloween to you. I know this was always the time of year you would drop by the studio more often than not. Oh, yes. Last year was Pennywise. I have a question yes, for you. Yes, it was. <laughs> so you, were, you freaked out John Gilstrap in your clown outfit last year. I know. Almost left. I loved it. Almost he left. He hates clowns. <laughs> uh, you know, I have a time. question for you. So when you would be in studio and you would line up some type of a guest via telephone with a questionable uh -huh. background, oftentimes we would have phone issues with that guest. Your, your line sounds nice and clean and clear, so you must be at heart a good person. <laughs> I am a good person. However, before we get to the end of the show, I've got to tell you all a story. You want to start the show with the story? Sure. Okay. I moved into this house in July, actually on July 26th. And I was working out in the yard a few weeks later. I had all the dogs with me. So there was no one in the house. And I heard this huge bang noise. And I thought, well, the guy across the street's working on his house. That's probably what it is. So I didn't think about it. Came in, something had taken the dresser. Now, this is a big dresser, completely full. Slammed it all the way across the room and into my closet door. You hang out with a very rambunctious crowd. And you can't I see do. these people is the problem. <laughs> well, now I got Zach on board, so I can't wait to see what happens with him. <laughs> yeah, Zach, what's your story, man? Well, uh, I got a little bit of background in scaring people as a child. I would always work in um, like haunted mazes and stuff, so I always like to scare people during this time of year. Per time of year. Mm -hmm. um, what got me into the ghost tours is I really like history. So doing the ghost tours themselves is a, kind of a double-edged sword. I can't like jump scare people but i can give them the history of the stops that we go to and it's it creeps into the back of their mind like wait we're standing in a, quite a historical area especially edge hill i mean it was built in 1858 so walking through there and people were feeling the presence of other spirits and orbs around them is what makes me excited about the tours themselves and this is the same tour you did for years when you were living here um, I let's see. I'd been doing it for 15 years, um, so yeah, Zach picked up on it. But he has a whole different perspective and a different outlook on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting some great feedback from folks. Uh, yeah, they're writing and they're telling me how great it is and everything. And oh, Zach, tell them about the bird thing. Oh, uh, the one night. I think it was a group of like six. We're in Zion Graveyard, so our very, or yeah, Graveyard, our very last stop. And I was at on the way out, and before I tell people to walk out, I always tell them to turn turn around so that way spirits can attach to them. Well, as I was wait having, a second, back huh? up a second on that line. <laughs> yeah, is that is that the Washington? Yeah, exactly, cemetery? back up. Back up. So, so, so you tell them what? So whenever you walk into a graveyard, so Zion. The tradition is you oh, walk out. Watch your hands here, Zach. Uh, the tradition is you walk out backwards, so that way spirits can't attach to you. I've never heard that before. It's an older, older Southern tradition. All right. Um, but whenever I had my patrons start turning around and walk backwards, there was like, I mean, this was at 9, 45, 10 o'clock at night. A bird ended up flying from the steeple of the Zion to the front gate. And as I said, okay, you guys can turn around and walk backwards, it just started squawking. I look up, and I'm just like, well, there goes somebody flying by. And all my patrons just kind of looked at me like, you got, you're you a little crazy. <laughs> so the the bird, what do you think the bird was doing? Probably, it was probably a spirit just stopping in, saying hi, just making the presence known that they're there. Any chance it was just it a bird? Did not, oh, it did not sound like hi. 
I uh, his wife happened to be on the tour and recorded the tour, and it was right after he told the story of uh, the spirit that scares me the most on the tour. He had just finished that tour, that part of the tour, and it was a massively large, dark bird came swooping down. When I listened to the recording, every hair went up on my neck. Yeah, I think Matt Harvey's a skeptic here. And what, what, what can you do to convince skeptics <laughs> during this show here? I'm a bit of a skeptic, yes. Matt, just go on the tour. That, well, that's, that that's for great. Years. I know, I know, yes. And, and I think it would be fantastic to go on a tour. Join me anytime. Yeah, I'll just uh, <laughs> rope you up, come up to the prosecutor's office, rope you up, and put you on one of Zach's tours. Zach, how long does the tour last? About two hours. About two hours. And when's your next one? I believe Friday is the Day of the Dead tour. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah, so, Friday and Saturday we're doing Dead of the uh, Day of the Dead tours because that's how long it lasts, the first through the second. And what we're going to do is it's we're bringing in a little bit of the South American flavor with the American flavor. So... Um, you know, they uh, in South America, they believe that, you know, they leave out food. They leave, you know, they have dinners for the dead. Um, they put out decorations and photos. What we're going to do is make it a little more Americanized. We're going to thank the spirits as we go to each stop. I've told all the patrons for both Friday and Saturday to bring a candle. We're going to light it at each stop and to bring pennies or small pieces of candy to leave as gifts. Again, to thank them, you know, for for allowing us to be a part of who they were and, you know, in our way, bringing them back to life, giving them, you know, a, a real personality. Is there any thought to why, I mean, everybody dies sooner or later. So billions of people have, have died over the years. Any thought as to why some are restless ghosts and why some houses or some structures, some places are haunted and some are not. Zach, you want to take that? Yeah, so um, I personally believe it's energy. I mean, everybody in a physical world holds on to something that they truly love, whether it's our wallets, personal belongings. We hold on to that in the physical world, but in the afterlife, we're no longer here, so we still want to keep that attachment. Um, For instance, I mean, uh, I'm sure people have heard about Robert the Doll. A spirit possessed that doll, and then it now causes chaos whenever it's disrespected. So I don't know anything I have about not Robert heard the doll at all. Yes. <laughs> yes what is that? The doll, D O L L doll. Yeah, okay. like doll. Um, I'm not sure where exactly Robert the doll originated from, but what ended up happening is a child ended up having Robert the doll. Whenever that child passed, he was very attached to that child, and he possessed the doll itself. So um, that sounds like a movie. Yeah, <laughs> there, there's a movie, and even like Annabelle itself is kind of a playoff of Robert the Doll. So I personally believe like we have attachments to things that we truly love. I keep hitting the table. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, that we truly love, and especially things that, in like how you're mentioning houses, we save up so much money to buy these houses and gain personal attachments to them because we're. That's our everyday lives. We see it day in, day out. And even, um, I'll even talk about the jail a little bit. Whenever people die in jail as well, are they stuck there or do they continue to move on? Some people are stuck there. Some people will move on after they're no longer here. A lot of the things, like I said, is energy and emotions. So like courthouses, I mean, you have a lot of high energy and high emotions there, such as greed, lust, and love. I mean, people get married in courthouses. People also get sentenced. They get divorced in courthouses. Yeah, people also get sentenced to life imprisonment in courthouses. So that's that causes a lot of great, a lot of depression, in my opinion. So that's an impactful moment for people whenever they're physically here. And what you don't uh, just uh, do ghost tours. You also have this interesting group of friends that follow you around that the rest of us can't see. Can you elaborate on this a little bit? <laughs> my posse of spirits. Yes. Some, that sometimes cut the power <laughs> yeah, to this radio station. 
<laughs> I don't know. I'm waiting for something. I'll tell you what, when you had me on hold, my phone started doing the static thing. I thought, oh, no, here we go. Yeah. Um, well, you've been clean so far. But, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, heard a, I heard a spirit behind you in the background. <laughs> yeah. bird oh, no, chirping. I'm, I'm going to send them with Matt today. You know, mm -hmm. he has a he has a relationship with courthouses and jails. That's true. Um, I think I'll send some folks with him today. <laughs> I would prefer you not. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. <laughs> you called it on yourself. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yes. Well, I have a question though. What about animals? What about what about them? Yeah, I say what about them? Do, do they have like so? Do they do they have spirits? Do they hang out after afterwards? Do they have spirits? One hundred percent. Yeah, I'd say one hundred percent. When I lost Jackson, my shepherd, I saw him for quite some time. Uh, same position. He always laid in in the hallway, his head down on his crossed paws. And then one day, I just didn't see him anymore. It was almost like he was saying, "Mom, I'm okay." What is the the so, most? Oh yes. On the tour that you do, Zach, maybe you've had a different experience than Anne, but maybe from both of you on that Charlestown tour, Anne, what was? the scariest place for you on the tour where you felt the most energy? And then I'll ask the you, Zach. The basement, the basement of what? The basement of Zion Episcopal Church. And what happened there? Uh, too many things to go on. You'd have to do an all-day show. Um, yeah. People were assaulted. Um, the photos, there's one photo I try not to look at at all. It was a full-bodied apparition sitting between two of my patrons. Neither one of them saw it. And then when I went back through some pictures from years before, uh, I went back to like 2014, I noticed the same woman. But she started off this last time as an apparition over top of this young girl's head. And she's wearing, uh, you know, it was very filmy. And then, but when she became a full bodied apparition, she was wearing like a, a fur collar, a fur hat, a uh, very long, long nose, bulging eyes. And she was grinning with no teeth. I cannot look at that photo. Um, one of the reverends at the church years ago had called that um, that basement a portal to hell, and there had been a mirror in the basement, and she she demanded that the mirror be removed. We no longer go in the basement. Well, how can? But that's a church. How can that? How can there be a portal to hell in church? That doesn't. It doesn't seem to make any sense. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like that's a a, a a safe space spiritually and well, supposed the to sanctuary, be. Sanctuary, yes. If you go in, we had um, uh, one of the elders of the church had a key one night on on the tour, and we went up into the sanctuary, and there was such a lovely, beautiful feeling, and the people were getting pictures of pastel orbs just bobbing along up near the altar, and it's just, I think that that particular basement, um, it had three churches have stood on top of it, and there have been tragedies. Uh, the second church burned down. There were, there were victims. Um, of course, the Civil War part, it was a hospital. We had, uh, it was overtaken by Union soldiers. It was a stable. And you've got to think of all the men that were wounded there and bled into that ground. Zach, how about you? What has been the scariest part of the tour that you've been working? So I think the most active spot, in my opinion, I mean, Zion's pretty active. Uh, just about every tour I do is I generally have some kind of experience there. Um, most scariest part, I'd say, is the boarding house and the Patty Webb house. What, where are those on the tour? Uh, Beginning, middle, well, end? You'll have to I would say, I, I want to say find out. Yeah. Um, I, I don't mean location. I just mean in terms of the tour and how they follow. It's about like the fourth stop we do. Okay. And what and happens there? So the boarding house, my wife actually had an experience of her own. Before we even walked up to the boarding house, we're at probably about 25 yards away from it. She just stops me and says, I have a weird feeling. I'm like, okay, do you want to go home? It was just me and her. She was just trying to listen if I enunciate things correctly, if I'm talking loud enough. She's like, no, we keep on going to the tour, crossed the street, got to the boarding house, and I was telling her the story about the boarding house. She got the inclination to walk to the front of the building, look inside one of the uh, glass panes on the doorway, told her the story about Lewis Johnson. As I was telling her that story, she just turns her head to me, pale as a ghost, and goes, I saw him. What she saw was a shadow figure with no head pacing from left to right in one of the windows. 
Is is that the place by the train tracks? Yes. Okay. Yes. I've seen the sign. So that building itself was actually built in 1839. And what happened to Lewis Johnson? Uh, well, unfortunately, Lewis Johnson was an African American man that was probably killed on the way to the bathroom. So that part of Charlestown was is known as Dogtown, and it was also a sundown town back in the 1800s. So of course, if it was dark outside, African Americans were not supposed to be outside. A prolific group, I will say, that used to patrol Dogtown back then, but ended end up taking these people's lives or injuring them in some sort of way. So you can say who they are. Seth. Okay, um, it was the KKK that mm -hmm. used to patrol that part of Dogtown. So. Lewis Johnson, what it's believed is Lewis Johnson went out to the outhouse in the middle of the night to go use the bathroom, as everybody does have to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. Patrol probably came through, saw Lewis Johnson outside by the outhouse, attacked him, killed him from behind, decapitated him. So <clears throat> the story about the boarding house is generally contractors will go in there, try to renovate it, and they'll only work like maybe a day, maybe a week. One gentleman actually dropped his tool bag the same day he was there, called the owner, said, I, I will not walk back in that house. What ends up happening is whenever these contractors work in there, they'll be working on one part of the house, minding their own business, and they'll get grabbed on the shoulder or tapped. Turn around, there's nobody behind them. I believe it's Lewis Johnson trying to find his killer, trying to make sense of why he was murdered in that area. Mm -hmm. um, so like it, it's kind of... I say it's a weird or the scariest part of the tour because on the front side of the boarding house, it looks like it's been renovated. But if you look on the back side of the boarding house, you can see all the original boards still. So Because nobody will finish the job? Yes. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> I think we should send Matt Harvey there with a saw, a couple hammers and nails, and have him do some work there. What do you think? And, and yeah, an indictment. <laughs> Maybe, been, yeah. Uh, they've been trying to get that house done since 2004. Oh my goodness, that's 20 it, years. It's supposed to be, yeah, it's supposed to be, uh, was, uh, Mr. Now owned it at that point, and it was supposed to be used for low-income housing, and it, he has not been able to complete the job. Well, let me ask you this. <clears throat> Are there any places on the tour, this goes for either of you, that you enjoy going to because there's a comforting energy? I mean, not all oh, yeah, spirits are malevolent. Oh, good word. <laughs> Zach, do you want to go first? I'd say the Opera House, honestly. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, there is a lot of bad blood in the Opera House itself, but the principle of what the Opera House originally was back in the 1900s was it was for everybody to get together to have a good time and like enjoy a show, circus, or whatever may was going on that day. But any time I talk about the boarding house, I feel a happy presence. Like, the spirits are kind of like, oh, yeah, he's telling our stories. He's making us remembered. Um, but where it gets kind of not so happy is whenever I talk about the gentleman that died upstairs in one of the apartment buildings. Um, he was well-known. He was also well-known for being an alcoholic. And any time he would be walking down the street, people knew it was better off to get across the street and leave him alone. Just wasn't a very jolly guy. Well, one night he fell asleep in his apartment building with a lit cigarette, caught his apartment building on or apartment on fire, tried to run down the steps to escape the fire, ended up dying of smoke inhalation on the stairway. Said, so, do you want to tell him about the paranormal investigations you've done, Ann? Um, I'd rather, I think I'd rather go to where I feel happy. Okay. Is that okay? Sure, sure. go right ahead. Um, I feel happiest at Virginia Cole, happiest and saddest the only spot that i miss dreadfully not doing the tour is virginia cole's grave um who i've I, i've spoken of her over the years she was 14 she was put in a um disappointment room as a child uh to make a long story short there was nothing that was common if you had a child that was less than um not uh not Pretty enough, not uh, intelligent enough, or had a deformity. She had none of the above. Um, she was from an illeg illegitimate uh, relationship, and I ha became very, I'm not obsessed with her, but just in tune with her, and spent almost two years researching her, 
And whenever I go to her, I just, I feel the love because she knows that I care for her. And um, I had someone say, uh, because she shows up only in pink, and I was surrounded in pink in several photos. And uh, I've had several people say, "You're, you're her mother figure because she had no parents that cared. I almost cried. <laughs> I have uh, one minute left here. First of all, Zach Cole, any relation to Virginia Cole? No, no. Um, that was one thing. Whenever I first started doing the tours and she started talking about Virginia, I was like, that's kind of ironic. I have the same last name. Um, Virginia was from Harper's Ferry, though. I'm, I'm originally from PA. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe her and I have any relations as far as family. Um, Maybe this was your call to come back. There you Zach. go. I mean, that was, the th that was one thing that my wife and I talked about. Um, because, like, I, I make it a point to always talk about Virginia every tour I do. Mm -hmm. Because that's one thing, whenever you read Anne's book and you read the chapter about Virginia, it's a, it's a tearjerker, I'm not going to lie. Um, but that was one point I would always make across because she was a 14-year-old girl. Sure. Nobody wants to be forgotten whenever they're not no longer here, especially the means of where she or how she lived. That, that was one thing that I always wanted to make sure I had to mention in a tour. Happy Halloween and Kiel Fern. Great to talk with you again. Great to talk to you, too. And if anybody wants to go on a tour this weekend, Day of the Dead Tours, 8 p.m., you have to call for a reservation. Call me at 681-296-2989, and you can hear the werewolves of London in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Zach Cole, good to meet you, sir. Good to meet you. Have a happy Halloween. Stay safe. Watch out for the kids tonight as well. Be responsible as you move about. And Matt Harvey, we'll see you again. Mr. Gilstrap as well. Go vote. Make a plan to vote. Hey. Dave Ramsey shows happy next. Halloween, happy guys. Halloween. Happy Halloween. This is Talk Radio. W.R.N. Martinsburg and TV. Tim, we'll talk to you again in 22 short hours.